Charles W. Steger and Virginia Tech, intertwined for over 40 years, student, alumnus, assistant professor, dean, vice president, and president. And at every step on the journey, and in countless ways, the man and the institution have shaped each other. What is it about Charles Steger that's made it work so well? He's been a principled visionary. He's resolute, he's persistent, uh, he is intelligent, and he's trustworthy. He's such a humble individual. He's a giant and he's a humble individual. And hard to be both, but he is. What Charles has always brought is you know, great academic credentials, great listening qualities, very good interpersonal skills, and the ability to lead without having to be the loudest voice in the room. Uh, we are confronted with all kinds of problems, and probably one of the contributions that I can make, if I make any, is to think strategically uh, about what's going on, and also to think creatively about ways to solve the problems that we've not approached before. Innovative, creative thinking, expanding the vision of Virginia Tech to invent a new future for the Commonwealth and beyond, a restructuring of how higher education operates in Virginia, realigning research efforts into centralized institutes for a multidisciplinary approach to problem solving. He's been a blessing to the Commonwealth. Uh, a lot of the things that he's done will not be completely recognized for many, many years. He certainly has uh, propelled Virginia Tech into being a, an enormous engine of, uh, of economic development, uh, of training, of, of research. Uh, I, I just don't think we could have had a better slogan than invent the future, because that is what he has been all about. Bringing Virginia Tech into regions across the state and partnering with Carilion Clinic to found a new medical school and research institute. I think what it takes to make something like our partnership work and work wonderfully well as it has was first vision. Seeing around the corner, seeing what could be. And I think it was Charles's relationships with the General Assembly that was able to bring us nearly $60 million that became the cement for putting all this together, being able to build the building, and where we are today. Because Virginia Tech is, is a classic American land-grant institution, maybe the very best in the whole collection of them, because of that, the presidency of Virginia Tech really has to assume a large capacity to serve the public interest. That's what Charles does. And whether it's the Virginia Tech investments in uh, the Research Institute in Danville, whether it's programs across other communities in Southside and Southwest Virginia, whether it's the continued activities in terms of being very bold in terms of health care with Carillion, um, he, I think, has really honored that commitment in a way that uh, very few other institutions across the Commonwealth have fostering excellence in classrooms and laboratories and across the curriculum, extending the presence of Virginia Tech around the world. Fundamentally, I think, for people to understand and be able to operate in today's global society, they have to be able to understand other cultures and learn how to see and to think from the perspective of other people in the world. And this type of immersion and travel experience uh, lets them see the world in a way many, many of our students never imagined or never experienced before. The university is, is reaching beyond its physical bounds, um, you know, having a presence in other places, and, and a lot of that is attributable to Charles Steger. Creating an environment where entrepreneurship can thrive and grow. Virginia Tech's research budget has been mobilized for the public interest in the course of these years. It's a very large, very successful research enterprise. It has been the core of that wonderful development around the Tech campus and the research park. He had the ability also to, to bring with him people uh, that, not necessarily of like mind, but principled and, and you know, motivated you know, to get things done and to get that research and that development center. I mean, 
and they did. And guiding Virginia Tech to its new home for athletics. The way he handled uh, the discussions and uh, the politics and everything that, that went on that led to Virginia Tech coming into the Atlantic Coast Conference was just extraordinary. Maybe my most favorite day as governor was uh, we got in Tech into the ACC. It was a key game with Miami. The Hokies were beating Miami badly. Uh, Charles was kind enough to come out and uh, give me a little recognition at halftime. We'd gone through a lot to get the Hokies in, but boy, boy, it was worth it, and it was a, it was a great evening. Growing, strengthening, advancing, and serving. Under Charles Steger, Virginia Tech has stepped into the role of a top-tier national and international institution. It's been a labor of love. He loves Virginia Tech, and I think he loves this region and believes so much in what we're doing. I think it's just a heart and soul of who he is. Always the servant, always the, the humble servant, always the one who, who wants to, uh, to make things happen for others. I think Charles's legacy will not only be to Virginia Tech, uh, but will be to higher education and economic growth in the Commonwealth. The arts, I, I think that Dr. Seeger's le uh, legacy is the arts, he has changed us. We will now be a greater institution. Well, I just miss seeing, seeing him, uh, and I hope I'll continue to be able to see him. I, I just, I have great admiration for him and, and how he leads and, and the quality of person that he is. To Dr. Steger, a grateful university will always remember you and all you've done for our Hokie community. Thank you, Dr. Steger. 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 Thanks for everything. Thank you, Dr. Steger. Thanks, Dr. Steger, and go Hokies. Thank you for everything, Dr. Steger.